All right, so today we're gonna to be learning about 4.1, which is on plate tectonics. And our learning objective for today is that you can describe the geological changes and events that occur at convergent, divergent, and transform plate boundaries. The essential knowledge that you're gonna gain is understanding what convergent, divergent, and transform boundaries are, and then how these different boundaries cause some um, geologic things such as volcanoes, islands, earthquakes, and things like that. So we're gonna start with looking at the Earth structure. And we're gonna have this diagram here as we kind of talk about the different layers in Earth structure. So the first part's gonna be the most inner part here, and that's gonna be the core. This is gonna be a dense mass of solid nickel, iron, and radioactive elements, and they release a massive amount of heat. And that's gonna be really important to the rest of Earth's structure. The next part that we have is going to be the mantle. And this is gonna be a liquid layer of magma that's surrounding the core. And it is kept liquid because the core is releasing so much heat. And that's why we're actually gonna have that magma there is because of the core heat. The next layer, if you look up, so now you can look at this zoom in bubble. The, um, we've got the mantle, we've got the magma right there. So the next one is gonna be the asthenosphere. And this is gonna be a solid flexible outer layer of the mantle, which is beneath the lithosphere. So it's kind of this in-between layer. The lithosphere is going to be this thin brittle layer of rock that's floating on top of the mantle. And this is gonna be broken up into tectonic plates. So this lithosphere is gonna be a lot of what we are talking about today. So keep in mind that that's kind of where it comes in the layers of earth structure. And then on top of the lithosphere is gonna be probably the part that you're a bit more familiar with, which is the crust. And this is the very outer layer, and this is gonna be earth's surface. So all of the rocks and dirt and soil and kind of the stuff that we've talked a little bit about is going to be the crust. Now, as I said, the lithosphere has different plates and we're gonna look at the different types of plate boundaries that you can have. Now, the first is going to be a divergent plate boundary. And this is the one that you see in the top picture on the right-hand side there. And this is where we have plates that are moving away from each other. Now, because they're moving away from each other, it creates this space where magma is going to be rising up and continuing to force the plates apart. So it's kind of coming up like this. And what this is gonna form is mid-oceanic ridges, volcanoes, it's gonna cause the seafloor to be spreading and rift valleys, which we see on land. Um, and so divergent is where they are moving apart. They're diverging from each other. The next one is gonna be convergent. And this is where we have plates actually moving towards each other. And this leads to subduction, which is where one plate is being forced beneath another. So if they come together here, you're gonna have one that gets pushed underneath. And this is gonna form mountains, island arcs, earthquakes, and volcanoes. So convergent, they're coming together and one of the plates gets pushed under. Now the third is going to be a transform fault plate boundary. And these are gonna be plates that are sliding past each other in opposite directions. So if you kind of take your hands and move them like this, that's gonna represent a transform fault boundary. And this boundary is where we are going to see earthquakes um, occurring because of it. So we're gonna talk about convection cycles, which are something that happens when we've got these divergent plates. So remember that we have the magma um, that is heated by the Earth's core is gonna rise up towards the lithosphere. Rising magma is going to kind of come up in that divergent plate boundary that we have. And as it comes up, it's going to cool and expand, which is going to continue forcing these plates apart. And we're gonna see this happening right here in the middle. So we're seeing that as it's coming in, it's actually sort of forcing these plates apart because this magma is solidifying and pushing them. 
And what this is going to create is um, mid-ocean ridges because as it is coming up and some of it's hardening, it's going to be pointed up and it's gonna be a ridge. It can also lead to volcanoes if you have enough of that magma that kind of starts to shoot up, which is going to sometimes be some islands that we are going to see. And then it also leads to these spreading zones or seafloor spreading, where like I said, as it comes up and cools, it's going to push this apart. And as this cools, it's going to solidify into new lithosphere. So kind of, um, if you're looking at these ridges, that's gonna be part of new lithosphere. It's not like this magma anymore. And what we are going to see with this spreading, so as these plates get pushed apart, they're eventually going to come across the next plate, which we see right here as the seafloor plate is coming up against the continental plate. And here is where we're going to now force a subduction zone because as it's pushing, it's gonna have to go somewhere. And the ocean plate is actually gonna be heavier than the one coming from land. So the ocean plate is gonna be the one that is going down. And as it goes down, it's gonna melt and it's gonna form back into magma. And also it's gonna form little bits of magma coming up. So if you see on this picture here, you've got little bits of magma. And this can actually create narrow coastal mountains such as the Andes that are gonna be here on land. It can also give us volcanoes, but that's because this plate is going down and some of the magma is coming up a little bit. Ultimately, this all kind of happened because of this divergent zone that's pushing these plates farther. Now, the next thing we have is a convergent boundary. And it's important to know that convergent boundaries can happen in with um, all types of plates. So it can be oceanic or it can be continental. And this is gonna be where we have a subduction zone. So the first one is gonna be if you have an oceanic plate meeting with another oceanic plate you're gonna have one plate that's subducting under another one. And as we see here, and as I talked about on the last slide, that forces magma to kind of come up at this boundary. And this leads to mid-ocean volcanoes. An example of this that you would see is with Japan, but it can also lead to an offshore trench. So if you look right here, we've got um, the, where this crust is moving down, you get a little bit of a dip. And so this can create trenches in the ocean. Now, the next one that we're going to look at is when you have the oceanic crust coming against the continental, or sorry, the oceanic plate coming against a continental plate. And oceanic plates are going to be more dense, so they are going to be the one that sinks and goes down in the subduction zone. And as I said on the last slide, as it goes down, it's actually going to be melting into magma, kind of continuing this cycle here. But magma is going to also be forced up a little bit, and this is going to lead to coastal mountains, um, such as the Andes, or we even have some of those here in Washington. Think of like the Cascades and the Olympics. And then we are going to get also volcanoes and trenches and tsunamis are going to potentially happen like right here on the boundary. Then our last type is going to be a continental to continental. And this is gonna be where one continental plate is going to subduct under the other one. And this is actually going to force the crust upwards. And this is going to create mountains. An example of this would be like the Himalayas. So as these crusts are coming together, it kind of causes the um, plate goes down, but the crust just goes and pushes up and that's going to create the mountain range. So the next one we have is gonna be a transform fault boundary. Remember, that's where you're gonna have them kind of sliding past each other, and they are gonna be sliding in opposite directions. Now, this is gonna create a fault, which is a fracture in the rock surface, and there's actually places in the world where you can go and very easily see exactly where this fault is. It's a little bit of a crack. An earthquake is going to be the most common activity that occurs here because these two plates as they're sliding, they actually have rough edges. And so sometimes these edges are going to get stuck on each other. Now the plates are still moving, even though it's stuck. 
And so what's going to end up happening is as they're still moving, this pressure is going to keep building up and building up as the edges are staying stuck. And at some point, eventually stress is going to overcome this locked position. And suddenly the plates are going to release and they're going to slide past each other. This releases a lot of energy and it shakes the lithosphere, which is how we get earthquakes happening. So if you look here, um, we've got, if you've got the two plates here that are going to be moving and then eventually they will move apart. And this is going to cause a shock that actually the shock waves travel away from even right where this movement happened. And that's going to be where we kind of have like an epicenter of an earthquake, but the shocks can still be felt throughout them. Now, finally, we're going to look at how tectonic plates can actually help us to predict where you're going to find certain types of geological things. And if you look at this map here, I want you to notice that the little yellow circles represent earthquake. Um, the red ones represent a convergent boundary. The white represents divergent. And then the orange is going to be a transform boundary. So if you look at this, you can see um, some different patterns here. And one of the ones that we actually have here in the Pacific Northwest, we are a part of what's called the ring of fire. And so if you look here, this whole thing is going to be the ring of fire. And this is a pattern of volcanoes all around the Pacific plate. So all these yellow things are going to be where we are going to potentially have um, volcanoes occurring. And this is because of the convergent boundaries. So when you have those convergent boundaries happening, you are going to have a lot of volcanoes and you're also going to have a lot of um, earthquake activity potentially occurring in some of these areas where you also have a transform line occurring. So if you look here, the transform faults, we here in Washington are lucky because we have a transform fault and we have <laughs> this ring of fire. So we kind of got a lot of it going on here. But remember, this is where earthquakes are going to be happening. So think of like California. They have a lot of earthquakes because they're right here on this transform fault. And then additionally, we have hot spots, and these are going to be areas of especially hot magma that are going to be rising up to the lithosphere, and this is going to be giving us mid-ocean islands, such as up here in Iceland and in Hawaii. Um, so those are hot spots. So your practice FRQ for 4.1 is going to be explain how subduction leads to volcanic activity. And this is giving you a chance to practice the skill of explaining how environmental concepts and processes represent, um, relate to environmental issues. So again, practice FRQ is explain how subduction leads to volcanic activity. So those are going to be that's going to be your FRQ 4.1, and those were your notes on 4.1.